Hello everyone and welcome back. This is update number two on my rainwater harvesting system. Uh, here is one of the changes since my last update. Uh, so I'm just going to take you to see the entire system real quick. Let you get a quick look of it. And what I'll do is I'm going to start with the starting with the roof and the gutters and just work my way down. Um, so first I'll, I'll I'm going to let you know I'm going to tell you what all this is here. And then I'll explain this, which is called a first flush diverter. Um, I'll explain some filtration that I have connected over here. I'll show you the water level gauge. Okay, then I'll um, I'll come over here. I'll show you the overflow pipe where all the excess water goes. Uh, then I'll show you some of the plumbing down here. Um, there's some really important adapters um, that make your life a lot easier if you watch one of the videos. Something that took me a lot of time to figure out. Um, also, I'll show you what uh, this gray piece is here. It's called a union, but I'll explain the um, the uses for that in just a minute. Uh, so yeah, basically, I'm just going to go through the entire system, top for, top to bottom. And if you've watched my first video, it, some of this might be a little redundant, but I'm going to do this video as if you've never watched uh, a video over rainwater harvesting. Uh, also, I'm doing a how-to series on how I've built this system. Um, I've gotten all my information um, from the web and from uh, YouTube. Um, just research through that. I've watched many videos. I've watched how a lot of people have built these with the IBC totes. It seems to be the most cost-effective way to build a rainwater harvesting system. And I'm using this for my aquaponics garden here. And I'll show, I'll show you that on some upcoming videos. But this was the purpose of building uh, my rainwater harvesting system. So first, you can see here that I have, um, a, this is a three inch PVC pipe that connects to my gutter stout, it connects to my gutter downspout over here and then runs all the way over here and I have it running at an angle at, it, um, at least a quarter inch per foot uh, from there to here and that's so the water will flow. Then that connects here to my other gutter downspout here. So all my water is rushing down here into here. Okay, and I'll come back to this. But first, the reason why I put this three inch PVC pipe here to collect the water and I didn't just block off um, or cover the hole like, like this actually. Here's one that I already did cover because I moved my downspout from here to right over here. So originally I did just cover the hole thinking that all the water would just back up and run down it would run down here to the pipes however my gutters are um, they're like a frown or a sad face where the highest point is in the middle and then this side slopes down this way and then here this side slopes down over here another thing you may be thinking uh, why didn't I just uh, slant my gutters or readjust my gutters so the water would flow this way? And the reason I didn't do that is because I'm going to do that on the other side of the house. I didn't have enough uh, wood, you can see here, to angle the gutters. I would run out of wood actually. Uh, they would have to drop lower than that to make the water flow this far. So because of that reason, that's why I built or added this here and on the other side of the house, I am going to drop the gutters so all the water then will flow towards these two downspouts. To hang this pipe, I used, to be honest, I don't know the name of this, but I just call it metal tape. Um, this is something you can easily get from Lowe's or Home Depot. And I just put two, two to three screws into each band there. And I have five bands total over about, let's see, about 25 feet or so, 25, 25, 30 feet. Okay, something I want to show you up here. This is my first line of filtration. This is um, leaf guard or gutter guard. I got this from Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, but after doing this, what I noticed, um, this is my first time to come up here, to even look up here in about three months. And what I've noticed is, see here I have a small gap. This is where some leaf and, and you know some some leaves and debris can get through. There's another small gap over there. Uh, 
So what I would recommend is call your your local um, a local gutter guy, and they have an industrial grade gutter guard that it, it's all metal or aluminum, and it will they'll actually fasten it with screws to your gutters. You won't have this problem. But since this is what I already have, this is what I'm going to stick with because it's actually it's very low maintenance. It's something I only got to got to come up here every few months to um, clean out my gutters and to just tidy up the the leaf guard. So this is my first line of filtration, my um, gutter guard or leaf guard. Okay, so we have where we have the downspout, the water from the downspout on that side of the house flowing down here. We have the water from this downspout flowing down here. All that water flows down into this first pipe. When that water fills up, it will. when it fills up to here, it's going to overflow and then fill these other two pipes up. The reason for the multiple amount of pipes is because I, I, I can't go very, very high, very tall. I don't have a lot of room. So instead, I have multiple shorter pipes to collect a larger amount of water. And the reason I'm collecting that water is, you know, in between rains, you have a buildup of those, those leaves that might slip through uh, the, the leaf guard up there or some dirt or so, uh, bird droppings. And so that first water is going to come here into these pipes and I won't put that in my tank. I'll just divert that first water here. That's why, you know, they call it a first flush diverter. And so this will catch about the first 20 gallons or so. And then what I have here at the bottom, there's some, there's some caps. Now these caps aren't tightened all the way. They're loosened just enough where the water will drip out. And that's because after each rain, you don't want to have to come out here and let the water out. You do want to come out here after every few rains and clean them, uh, you know, just, just get some of this debris so out. So after each rain, you don't have to come out here and reset, reset this. The water drips out after each rain. The first flush diverter automatically resets itself and you're ready for the next rain. Now, once the water fills up this pipe, there's a bottle in this pipe here. And so the water comes up and the bottle is rising with, with the water. Once the bottle hits here, it, it actually here, it can't fit through this. So then the water it gets cut off and it just backs up and then flows here to this pipe. Now the reason for the bottle, you don't have to have this bottle, but what this bottle does do is prevents turbulence right here and, pre and prevents any of this material here that, that may be stuck here from rising up here and in, in coming into this pipe into my tank. Now, if you don't have the bottle, it's not a deal breaker, but it does help with keeping the debris in the first flush diverter. I've had a few comments on this, and this is my water level gauge. A few people had asked how I check the, the water level, and the, how I checked it before was I just opened the lid and looked to see how much was in there. I knew this is something I wanted to install. I finally, finally got around to doing it. Should have done it sooner. It only took about 10 minutes to install. Um, I bought this off of Amazon. Uh, it's about 30 bucks. Now the only thing um, you might want to note when if you if you purchase one like this is I've only used a quarter of the face uh, of this. You have the green arrow here and the red arrow there. Uh, red for empty, green for full, and you have to adjust it according to your your tank or your vessel. And I, you know as I as I read the directions that it, it, if it's 100 inches deep, then it will use the entire face. But since mine's only about 30 inches deep, it only used a quarter of the face. So just something to note if you're going to buy one or if you're going to buy this exact same one, I'll post the link um, in the video description uh, from Amazon. But this definitely does help. It does the job. It's very easy for me to tell how much water is in here now. And of course, like you can see now, it's full. Here's one more look at the water level gauge. Uh, that's another thing to note if you purchase this the lens does kind of fog up um, there gets a little bit of water in here actually when the tank gets all the way full a little bit of water seeps through but as long as the tanks not all the way full that doesn't happen you can see here with the black line uh, that's the water level indicator and you can see it's completely full so the gutter guard was the first stage of filtration this first flush diverter is the second stage of filtration and then I do have a third stage of filtration and that is a double line pantyhose where the water enters the tank. This helps 
uh, tremendously like it's a must you must do this if not you'll, you'll get still some leaves and some debris in your tank um, still even after this you may get a little bit but this catches all the fine stuff it's great um, I've I cleaned it out about every let's see I, to be honest I'm not sure I've probably cleaned it twice since I've installed it uh, that's probably once every two months okay one other really important thing here that I want to show you uh, something that I had a little trouble with that this will save you a lot of time uh, this is just a, a three inch PVC piece um, male to female uh, threaded and okay so the biggest problem with this was getting this PVC piece to cinch down tight here but I have this large gap and these threads are tapered so it won't it won't it won't screw down all the way to fix this I designed this gasket uh, this is just a half inch rubber mat and I used a three and a half inch hole saw uh, to cut a hole through it and it fits perfect Okay, you can, I just actually just do it hand tight. Uh, this is tight enough. A little bit of water may just seep through here when your tanks are completely full and it's raining, uh, but not enough to even worry about. You're not losing water. That's water that's overflow anyway. And so yeah, that solves that. On my last video, this wasn't complete, but now I do have the overflow pipe completed. Um, it's very simple. I believe last video, it came to about right here and I just I ran out of pipe well, all I had to do was take a 90 uh, I got a little friend there too. check them out I uh, shot it down to the ground put another 90 on it and I used that same concrete block that my gutter that the water from my gutter was already draining on and use that now for my overflow uh, this works great and it's been overflowing the past couple days we've had a a lot of rain all my, my tanks are completely full uh, they're pretty much staying full right now. I didn't quite explain how this overflow worked. Uh, so once all the tanks fill up, the water has nowhere to go but back up these, back up this pipe. So the water will come up here, then just go over to this overflow pipe. And with all the other water coming in, it just pushes it right out all the way down the pipe. Now you see there's only one, this tank is the only tank connected um, that collects the rainfall and how all the other water gets dispersed is it um, all if the tanks are connected water will equalize itself so as the water comes in this tank it pushes water through this pipe and it fills up all the other okay, tanks. Okay I'm just gonna quickly explain some of this down here uh, this valve you see right here I just have this as a dump valve if I want to just clear my tanks out or dump all the water out for any reason um, you'll notice I have all the T's facing this way you see this the way the water flow is going it's all going that way uh, that is because that's where I have my water hose connection uh, down on the other end and that's what that's the direction I want all my pressure going uh, this is not a primary um, source where I'm gonna let the water exit this is just like a backup piece here so that's why this T is shooting the water that way okay here's a quick shot of uh, the water pressure with the tanks full that's uh, not bad now when I hook the hose up to it I have a 50 foot hose it doesn't come out like this at the end it still flows pretty well at the end but it it definitely does not have this much pressure after uh, you know connecting a 50 foot hose to it okay and here's the water flow after I hook it up to the water hose and I was actually incorrect this is a 75 foot hose so here you can see the amount of water flow I have after 75 foot of hose and this is with full tanks though as the as the water level goes down so does the water pressure and this flow will become slower uh, you can uh, um, attach an additional pump to this if you if you're gonna be moving this water over long okay distance. something I, I want to note here and I've done a video um, it's step number two adapters um, something you might have trouble with when building your system um, you can see here I have one type of adapter and then here I have another type of adapter 
There's also um, two or three other different types of adapters. So check out that video and that'll save you a lot of time in um, locating the correct adapters for your tanks. Okay, here uh, you might be wondering what this is. Uh, this is called a union and what this union allows me to do is to um, remove a tank if I need to. Okay, just to demonstrate I've um, unscrewed this union and took the pipe off. Now if I want it, I could easily just remove remove it right here and then my entire system comes apart. Uh, this is just a big help because if you ever need to do anything, you don't want to have to be cutting all your pipes and then putting them back together. It's This is just, this is for convenience, but it sure does help. Now, what I had to do to do this was I had to cut off each tank, each valve here. So if I turn this valve on, all my water is going to come rushing out again. And that water you saw coming out was just the water that was already in this pipe. So here, if I turn this on, it's coming. So now that I turned them back off, I can just connect it, connect it back together and the system runs normal again. One other thing to note on this, I used threaded unions. You can get a slip union. A slip is just like this where this PVC pipe slips in here and you glue it. I chose threaded here in case um, for any other, for, for any reason I did need to change anything for, for this union, the length of any pipe here that I could just lose this piece only instead of losing the union. Once I glue in the in, into the union then I'm gonna have my PVC pipe sticking out and that's all I have to work with. So this just makes it a lot easier for me at least. This is what I chose to do. Um, that's the reason for the th this threaded piece here. Thanks everyone for watching and subscribe to my channel if you want to get all the new updates. I did have a few more comments. Uh, a couple asking what about shielding this or covering it somehow that it's not too easy to look at. I completely agree with you guys and I do have plans to do that. Uh, so look forward to that. Um, I do plan on shielding this and also uh, look forward to the upcoming how to videos. Uh, step one and step two are up. Step one shows how I've uh, wrapped and cleaned these tanks. Step two goes over all the adapters in detail. Uh, step three will be the gutters in detail. Um, I'll also have the first flush diverter in detail as long as all my filtration in detail and anything else I um, you know, improve on this as I go along. Uh, thanks for watching everyone and look forward to the next video.